Hey folks, today we're going to focus on the supply curve. So again, we looked at as to why we have an upward sloping curve. It's because quantity and price are directly related. When the price of a good increases, producers want to produce more. And vice versa. We call this the law of supply. Now again, like the demand curve, we could also illustrate on a graph what happens when there is a price change and what factors would shift supply either to the right or to the left. We can label this portion here a movement along the supply curve and shifts in the supply curve. The good thing is, like demand curve, only price is going to cause a movement along the supply curve. Again, we are looking at price changing today. We're focusing on the graph as in present time. So now we can draw our graph as such to show what happens when there is a price change that affects the quantity supplied. And we're looking at the x-axis of quantity. Let's use cups of coffee once again. We're using 10 as a maximum quantity, five cups of coffee, zero hour origin, $5, $10, and this is price on the y-axis. And we're going to have 5 and 5 as our equilibrium point, point A. And now we can draw our demand curve. That's U. And now we can also draw our upward sloping supply curve. Again, Starbucks, their ticker symbol, to represent the red curve. So again, we can focus on a price change. Let's say that Starbucks wants to increase price. Again, it's their prerogative, it's their store. Let's say a dollar increase in its coffee. For Starbucks owners, franchisee owners, they're thrilled. They would love to charge consumers more when they sell coffee. So a dollar increase should motivate Starbucks to produce more. Dollar increase thus increases the quantity supplied by one more cup. So now we want to see how does a dollar increase affect the quantity supplied in our market. This again is a price change. And a price change happening today is going to move along the supply curve. So we're gonna focus on the y-axis, the price change, price. $5 plus $1 gives us $6. And again, at a higher price, Starbucks is willing to produce more coffee. At a higher price, point B, Starbucks will produce more coffee. So they're happy that they're able to produce more due to an increase in price. But what about consumers? At a higher price, consumers are not gonna really like the high price of coffee. So at a higher price, you will demand less. And that would make sense for the law of demand. So now I want you to see what's happening on the graph. At point A, we had supply and demand intersect. At point B, we do not have the demand curve intersect at point B. Now we have a market failure. Now, unlike the other example that we, we, we showed, the market failure, this black horizontal line between the demand curve and the supply curve, this now represents a surplus. 
a surplus of coffee that producers have overproduced, in this case six, and consumers willing to only consume four. At point B, producers are happy, six dollars, they produce six cups of coffee, but at six dollars, consumers are now going to consume less of just four. So there is an excess cups of coffee in the economy of two excess cups of coffee that nobody wants to purchase. Well, why not? Because it's too expensive. That's why. So this movement along the supply curve, as we can see here, is going to cause a market failure, specifically a surplus in the economy. And the only way for this to go back to its market equilibrium is for the price of the good to decrease back to $5. But this is one factor, again, the only factor, price change, that would cause a movement, a movement, as you can see, along the supply curve.